welcome 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 everyone to my channel i am here i am your girl divine chatty one i am here to provide you all with a video about um creating an altar and having an altar space um i know i posted um on my platform tap in it will be linked down below um I posted there a brief video about the reason why we should have an altar in our space somewhere around us so that we can utilize it and go to it. Um, but here I wanted to make a more detailed video about um, how to set up your altar, things to um, to have in order for your altar to really um, work for the benefit of you. And so that's what we are going to dis um, discuss now. So setting up your altar, the first thing that I want to get out to you all is setting your intentions. What is the purpose of having your altar? What is it going to be for? What do you want to receive from having an altar in your space? You have to understand that first and foremost. Now, once you have that outlined, why you want an altar, then you can move on to the next step, right? Because in order for anything to work, it's going to need you and it's going to need you at your highest. Okay. It's going to need you um, to come into this thing, knowing that you're going to receive something. Okay. Um, so it's going to need your dedication and your time. It's going to need you to, um, to keep up with the upkeep because I will say having an altar in your space wherever you decide to put it it's um it's a very sacred place and you are going to have to make sure that you keep up with the upkeep of it you know you want to take it down and clean everything down and wipe everything off after you constantly using it now i myself i have two altars here in my home and one of them is my ancestor altar and i clean that every week Okay, I, I clean that once a week where I take everything down, I wipe everything off that's dusting and I change out maybe the flowers that I have on my altar, whatever it is that I have on my altar that needs to be rotated out. I make sure to do that because this is a space that I have dedicated to my ancestors and I want to show them that respect by making sure that I keep it, you know, tidy and I keep it neat. And um, my other altar is one of a more for meditation, more for just clearing. Um, sometimes I may have something that's really heavy on me and I need to get it off. Sometimes I just need to just go there and just sit in that space just, just because. So then I have my meditation altar as well. And that space is the same thing. I burn a lot of incense and sage um, at that time in that area. So I make sure to wipe that off. Maybe some of the things may have like fell down um, from the window being open and the breeze coming through. So I make sure to keep that area clean as well. Um, so again, like I said, it is very, very important that you come into this thing knowing the reason why you want to create an altar. Because whatever energy you put in it is going to be, that's the energy that you're going to be able to receive or to get out of it. It's going to match that energy. So if you come in excited and full of energy, ready to receive, ready to dedicate yourself to your altar, that's what you're going to constantly get something out of it. However, if you come pretty much um, lackadaisical or not really caring, this is just a fact for you that it's not going to last and you're not going to utilize and you're not going to be able to get everything that you're supposed to out your or on your altar so know that okay um so that's first and foremost setting your intentions making sure and i'm reading my notes um setting your intentions making sure that you understand that that is the first and foremost um in order for your for your um altar to do what is what it's going to do um, so why is it that you want to set up? As I mentioned, you want to know why you want to set up and understanding why you want to set up an altar will also help you to understand the type of altar that you need. And just to name a few of the altars that I am familiar with, um, first will be a community offer. Um, I mean, a community altar. Then you have your ancestor altars. You have your prayer altars. You have your self-love altar. So it's all about self, self-awareness, self-development, self, um, you know, shadow work, everything dealing with you. So that's what that altar could be for. This fly is really 
trying to get my attention, really trying to get my attention. Um, then you also have your meditation altar where it's just solely about just coming and releasing. Um, I will say it's very important that you have these designated altars for these designated things. And the reason for that being is, for example, it's like your, and I don't want to compare it to that. So I'm just going to say it's like you yourself, right? You have things that's designated in your house that is yours and yours only. You like it. You have it set out and it's yours. Now imagine one of your children, if you have some, your significant other, your mom, your dad, whoever, and they come in and they bother your things. You feel a way about it, right? It can become a big issue. You get very emotional about people touching and messing with your things. So because of that, in the same way, you have to excuse me, you have to think about that when it comes to an altar. The altar is designated for that set purpose. So if you're doing a community alt um, altar, but inside of the community altar, meaning let's say you are, um, you have this altar set up in, in the front of your, uh, in the front of your living room or in an area where there's some traffic flow so people come over they can see this altar so a community offer is, is usually one thing that's out and people can see it so because of that um people come in and they you know pay their respects whatever they do in your altar so you have that but then you also also at your community alt altar you also um give reference to your ancestors as well so here it is you have let's say um Let's think of somebody. Michael Jackson. You have Michael Jackson on your community altar because you want to give reference and you want to give, it could be his birthday or something like that. And you just want to give tribute to Michael Jackson at that time. So you have him in his essence and all of that dedication. But then this is also your ancestor altar and say your father or your grandfather, right? It's also someone that's on your um, ancestor altar. Well, at that time, you are giving so much reverence and attention to Michael Jackson that the other ancestors, your an your ancestors, who you have also at this table, they're, they they wasn't feeling Michael like that. So it's kind of like you got Michael here. He is getting this attention when this is supposed to be the for the ancestors. And you see that's too conflicted. Or for example, say if you have a self um, love or a healing. Okay. What did you just have? I'm sorry, y'all. I am a mother of four and my baby's trying to talk to me. What did you have? I had watermelon. So you had watermelon and they had bananas. That's the same, right? Because it's a fruit. So what are you trying to tell me? It's okay that they had a banana because you had watermelon, right? Okay. Thank you for letting me know. So, yes, as I was saying, um, and it's like, for example, if you are working on releasing, 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 but then at the same time, not only are you putting down your release, you want to receive, it's conflicting. It's going to be conflicting energies because not only are you asking to receive at that time, but you also asking to release. So you got to have those designated areas where you can go and do that work because we don't want anything to, to get construed about what we're trying to do. If you trying to release, then I need spirit to know that I am trying to release these things. If you are trying to receive, then you need spirit to know I am trying to receive these things. And that is not to go against and say that, um, spirit is not into, I mean, you know, all knowing, I understand that, but it's just the practice. I want to get into the practice of making sure that I designated everything for that thing. For example, in your household, you probably have your towels on one rack and then you have your rags on another rack. It has this designated area. You know that this don't go right here and this don't go over here. Right? So in the same way, you're not going to find the fruits over in the produce. I mean, yes, you will. You're not going to find the um, fruits over in the meat department, right? It's, it has its own area. So because of that, think of it just like that when it comes to your altar. Make sure that you have the Pacific altar for its specific duties so that it can get that amplified energy and it's going to stay in the same, you know. We're not trying to confuse. We're not trying to make it different. And at the same time, we got to understand that we are calling energies, right? We are calling because spirits is just energy. So we are calling on certain energies to come into a space. And like I said, it's important that we understand that some energies or magnificent in, um, sorry, magnificent energies, um, 
they don't mean you know they don't mean you no good and so you got to be able to be able to um to be aware of those things and i don't want to confuse nobody with that term right now because that's not what we on here for that's not at all but i just wanted to make you know that there is a, a place there's a designation we should be able to um show the differences between the locations okay so um Depending on what type of altar you decide that you want to create will determine the location for your altar. As I spoke about earlier, for me, a community off um, altar can be placed somewhere where pr people who like if you have guests and stuff coming to your house, it's OK that your altar is out at that time because it's a community off um, altar. It's just like you walking into, it, um, let's say, a Chinese restaurant or an Indian restaurant. Um, and you see their altars there. You see food, you see, you know, a statue or candles or something there to that, you know, oh, that's an altar and it's where you can see it. Right. So in that same way, I would say your, the ones that are the altars that are more personal to you are the ones that you need to keep behind closed doors, whether that's in your closets, in your dresser drawers, um, inside of you know, your bedroom in a location where there's not heavy traffic, where everybody can't come in and mess with or disturb what is the works that's being going on in that area. Those altars will be more sacred and more, um, you know, personal, whether that's your ancestor altars or your, um, you know, your self healing altars, ones that you're using for your dream, dream work altars, whether though to me, those are the type of altars that need to be behind closed doors. Okay. Especially if you are a person that have a lot of people coming over because again, that just matter because we're working with energies and we don't need no unwanted energies to be stuck around, to be lingering, to do anything and cause any type of conflict with what the work that you're doing. So, um, lastly, I'm gonna go into the material, right? So the material that can be used on your altar, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up making a part two to this just so that I can give, um, you know, uh, a visual to provide a visual aid for people. It will not be, and I'm telling you now, it will not be my personal altar because that is my personal space and it's not something to broadcast. That's not, that's just for me and, you know, my ancestors and who it's dedicated to. However, I will build an altar to give visual okay and that will be a part two so um a few of the material that you you're going to need in order to start to alter your altar first and foremost if i go back to the very first time that i even started doing this altar spiritual type of work it was literally me and in, inside of my closet lights off very early in the morning between three and five o'clock in the morning that is a time that I was finding myself to be awake. That was a time that I designated to getting up and going into my closet before I had to go to work, setting my intentions out for the day. So I would go inside of my closet and it's just me sitting on my floor, nothing in front of me. Every now and then I would take a notebook to be able to write whatever thoughts that I may have had and I'll be able to create those. So I will say the only thing that you need to start your, your altar today is yourself. I told you that at the very beginning. You need yourself and your intentions. That's the only thing that you need to start your altar work today. Okay? So now moving on to other things that you can add and incorporate into your, um, your altar, right? So again, as I went on from having that space where it was just me, and I'm sorry if I'm looking off, I'm looking into the sky just to make sure that I'm going through, um, all of this information, make sure that I'm hitting all the points that I need to. Um, again, as I graduated from just myself and my paper, I do remember being on my carpet still. So it's on my floor inside of my closet. My closet is a walk-in closet. So it had a space just sitting right in the center of it. I had my sage when I was still having my, um, when I was, it was just myself. I still made sure that I had my sage because sage is a very good tool in order to cleanse a space, right? Spiritually, it moves the energy, right? It cleans out the space. Sage, um, 
paleocentosix that's also something that's also an herb that can be used to clear out the space so to create a spiritual area okay so those two things for sure is something that you want to also have incense you don't have to have it in a bundle you can have it in an incense um they sell those as well um frankincense is also a good one and again that's just another video you would just have to let me know down in the comments that you want that information of the different types of herbs that you can use in order to burn to help you while you're doing your um altar work so again it was myself my notebook and then my sage that's how i first started off and then gradually i and it didn't take me long to realize how important it was to have the elements, meaning earth, fire, water, and um, what? Earth, fire, water, and air. So making sure to have those elements incorporated was something that I'm not too sure. I can't recollect if it was something that was just learned in passing, just watching videos or um, dialogue shared between me and other spiritual people, or if it was something that came to me, came to me as I was, you know, sitting at my altar or meditating. I'm not too sure, but it could have been one of the three things that I, that I discovered to make sure to have those things. And so we got to start with fire first. So some of the things that you can use for fire that can represent fire is naturally lighting the sage. That is fire. So lighting the incense in order to clear the room. That is fire. You can also have candles, have your candles burning. That is a whole nother video as far as um, allowing your candles to burn completely, like keeping your candles lit and not blowing your candles out, using a tool to, in order to um, let the candles out instead of blowing them out. That's a whole separate video. Again, you're going to have to let me know down in the description that you need more details on why that is um, that is a thing. You also can have um, crystals that represent fire, like the fire energy, right? Um, and those, I would say those are the three things that's off the top of my head that I can think of for that can represent fire. Um, for air... You also, air is also an incense. The air, the the smoke can represent the, the air. Feathers, having feathers, that can also represent air as well. Um, are those the two that I have? Feathers, incense, those are the two. Those are the two that I have off the top of my head. Crystals. So crystals and plants. So flowers, as I mentioned, I have flowers on my ancestor altar. It's not something that I have on my um, ancestor altar at all times, although I would love to, but sometimes funds are not at the, the best, especially with me being a teacher on the, the summertime. We don't, you know, the money is not flowing the same. So, you know, you have to budget a certain way, but nevertheless, for the majority of the time on my altars, I have some type of live plant. So that will help with earth. You can have sand, you can have salt, you can have um, what else? Sand, salt, flowers, crystals, all of those represents earth. And then lastly, water. So water is the movement. So naturally you can just have water itself, just some water, some spring water, some natural water, some rain water, some moon, um, energy filled water, the sun water. Um, again, those are also separate videos. Um, you're going to have to let me know that you want that information. Oh, sorry, my phone is all, it went out, but you're going to have to let me know that you want the information on charging water according to the sun and the moon energy. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so you have those things having a table. If you use a table, I would say, make sure you can find a wooden table that will be best um using lies and because you want this you want the earth you want the natural there we go you want the natural things and if you have to start off with some type of plastic or something like that then yes but i would say you know just gradually try to get to the most natural state of all things also if you are burning any candles make sure it's in glass okay use glass that's the most purest um the the most purest thing and i'm saying that because i am from you know the south but um that's the most potent that energy is not 
um restricted it's literally moving okay so it's a moving glass allow things to move it doesn't hold it it doesn't soak it in um and so yeah so you want to make sure that you have that also if you are going to depending on what type of altar you're using will de um, determine the type of candle the color of the candle the type of candle that you're using so that will also determine you can have a white candle that is the most i would say the most basic candle to have will be a white candle if you're doing protection work you, where you're working on yourself that's black that's blue that's purple um those type of candles will also be good red for root work you know working on the roots working on your foundation so those type of candles so again i keep referring and i keep saying the same thing that's also a video if you guys need that information then you're gonna have to leave that down in the comments to let me know that you want more information on these different topics so i'm um, going back like i said you have your table you have your um elements that I mentioned, you have one of the elements that I mentioned to place on the table from each category. Um, you have your intentions, you have yourself, you know. Um, and then lastly, I would say you're going to need a cloth. Um, white preferably, because again, because of that clean, that pureness, um, that's going to be perfect. However, if you have other color cloths, because I do have numerous of cloths that I've worked with. I've worked with a pink one because I was working with self, like love, loving on myself, putting out love content for, um, the seminars that I was building. So I was working with a pink one. I ended up moving from my pink one and went to an orange one because it was more targeted to the seminar being about the womb. So working on womb wellness. And so I used a yellow one. I've used a tan one. I've used white. Currently, white has been the one that is in most rotation because I have a white. And so let me just say, when it comes to buying any of these um, things that you guys will need, um, you definitely can get a lot of this stuff from like the dollar stores, the Dollar Trees, Dollar General, Walmart, of course. But your local Goodwill can have these things. You can find these things on sale, but use what you got. Try to look in your home, look at all the stuff that you have first before you try to go out and try to buy stuff. So try to utilize the stuff that you have in your home first and build up that rapport with your altar. Um, your altar. Build up that routine with your altar. And then the more you get used to it, the more time that you're spending in front of it, the better you want your things to look. So I would definitely say let's um, start off that way. So again... I hope I'm not leaving anything out. I went over again the benefits of having the altar, why you should have the altar, where it should be, how do you set it up, where can you set it up, um, material that you can use in order to set your altar up. Again, the table as natural as possible, glass items, um, use, using, hold on, baby, using glass materials, um, the cloths that you're going to use on there. Um, what else? I think I pretty much hit everything, honestly. Like I said, once I go back and look at this video, um, and if I feel like I left anything else out, or if you guys can think of some type of questions, then please, please, please leave those questions down below. I tried to give more detail in this video than I did in the last one because I know people had questions and they want to set up and they want to understand a little bit more when it comes to the different altars. Um, I will be leaving information for a lady who offers um, a ancestral altar class it is local it is here where i am um where i am in tennessee and um she also offered over um zoom like um live so she does it in that form too you would just have to reach out directly to her please let her know that um i sent you guys over there um you can either say divide divine chatty one or you can say that elena sent you over there either one she will know exactly who um who i am and she will be able to help you all but like i said before if there's any questions that you have please reach out to me directly i will leave a link down below to link you to the group page that i have on facebook and i will also leave my email address down below that you can hit me directly with any questions that you may have i love y'all again i love you enough to not let you stay where you are and i hope that you all have a wonderful 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 night peace family